So a few announcements before we begin our worship. Uh, up, this upcoming week is Holy Week. Uh, our first uh, worship for Holy Week will be this Thursday, for Maundy Thursday. The service will be in person and online at 7 p.m. And um, then the Good Friday service will be online only. Uh, we, will, we will post that on our website. And uh, lastly, uh, our Easter service is at 1015. Please, please, please uh, RSVP online. Uh, so we can make sure that we have enough availability. There will be, uh, we'll probably ask, be asking some people to go downstairs if we do not have enough room in here, just to make sure that we are continuing to maintain uh, proper social distancing and all safety protocols. Um, for now, those are all the announcements that I have, uh, but we will begin our worship in just a second. one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Our gospel, processional gospel reading comes from Mark, the 11th chapter. When Jesus and his followers approached Jerusalem to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sends two of his disciples and says to them, Go into the village that sits opposite us, and immediately you will find a colt tied up upon which no one has sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, it's the Lord needs it, and he will send it back immediately. They went and found a colt tied outside on the street to a gate, and they untie it. And some standing there were saying, what are you doing untying that colt? And they told him what Jesus had said. And the people spread out, uh, and the people left them alone. And they bring the colt to Jesus and throw their clothes on the road 
and spread out as he sat on it. Many people throw their clothes on the road, while others spread branches cut from the fields. And the ones going ahead and the ones following were shouting, Hosanna! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming dominion of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered into the temple in Jerusalem. And after he looked around at everything, as it was already late in the evening, he returned to Bethany with the twelve. Hosanna to God in the highest. Hosanna to God in the highest. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. During this season of Lent, and especially on this day, we are called to return to the Lord with all our heart, with all our mind, and all our soul. Let us confess our sin and seek reconciliation with God and neighbor. Please take a moment of silence for reflection. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in spirit to follow in the ways of Jesus as healers and restorers of this world you love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. So by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in this way of Jesus. Amen. And let us pray. O God of mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. In this passage, the image of the servant of God is one of the uh, notable motifs in the entire book of Isaiah. And today's reading describes the mission of the servant whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the servant does not strike back at his detractors, but trusts in God's steadfast love. The reading. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. And the second lesson is from Philippians. It's in the second chapter, verses 5 to, uh, through 11. And here Christ did not act to attain the status and glory uh, that many thought he um, deserved, but, but he was obedient to God and even to the point of death. 
Following Christ's example, we too do not seek personal status or glory, but care for others as God cared for us in Christ's death. The reading. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. This week's uh, gospel reading, because in place of a sermon, I will be reading the Passion Narrative. This Passion Narrative goes from Mark uh, chapter 14, near the end of chapter 15, and it presents Jesus as the one who dies abandoned by all. He shows himself to be the true Son of God by giving his life for those who have forsaken him. This passion narrative happens all throughout the week of Holy Week, and it didn't just happen overnight. So as we enter into this Holy, Holy Week, let us keep this narrative in mind. Listen to what God is saying to you. It was two days before Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. The chief priests and the legal experts were looking for a way to secretly seize Jesus and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, because there may be backlash from among the people. While Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, he reclined at the table. And a woman with an alabaster jar of ointment, expensive, pure ointment, broke open the jar over Jesus' head and poured it on him. Now some who were there became indignant among themselves, saying, why has this ointment been wasted like that? For this could have fed, been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. That is a year's wage. They scolded her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you giving her such a hard time? She has done a good deed for me. If you are my disciples, you'll always have the poor with you. You can show them kindness whenever you want. But me, me you, will always, you won't always have. What she did, she did. In advance, she put the ointment on my body for my burial. Amen. Truly I say to you, wherever the good news is preached in the world, what she did also will be spoken in remembrance of me. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to turn Jesus over. When they heard, they were pleased and promised to give him silver in return. And he began to look for an opportune time to turn Jesus over. And on the first day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was being sacrificed, his disciples say to him, Where are you wanting us to go to prepare a place for you to eat the Passover? And he sends two of his disciples and says to them, Go into the city, and someone carrying a water jar will meet you, follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room? Where may I eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large room upstairs, 
already furnished and prepare for us there. And the disciples went out, and they went to the city and found it, just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when evening came, he goes with the twelve. And reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, Amen. Truly I say to you, one of you will turn me over, one who is eating with me. They began to grieve, and they say to him, one after the other, Is it I? Is it I? Jesus said to them, It's one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. The Son of God is going, just as it has been written of him. Woe to the one who turns over the Son of Humanity. It would have been better for that person if they had never been born. And as they are eating, having taken the bread, blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, this is my body. And having taken the cup, having given thanks and blessing it, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, my testament, which has been poured out for many. Amen. Truly I say to you, I will never again drink from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it, the new and dominion of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. But Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the rooster crows, twice you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same thing. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and he began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it was possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not from what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake for one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is so weak. And again he went and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and he found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up and let's go. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while he was still speaking, 
Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a great crowd of carrying swords and clubs sent by the high priest and legal experts and the elders. The one that turned him over had given them a sign saying, the one that I kiss, seize him and lead him away under guard. And when Judas came, he immediately went up to Jesus and said, Rabbi. Then they laid hands on him and seize him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the chief priest, cutting off his ear. But Jesus replied and said to them, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like you would a criminal? Day after day, I was in your temple with you, teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And everyone left Jesus and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a loincloth on. And they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and fled naked. Then they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and legal experts came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself by a fire. And the chief priests and all the council were seeking evidence against Jesus that they might put him to death. And they were finding none. For many were giving false testimony against him, but their testimonies did not agree. And some stood up, giving false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made by human hands and build another that is not built with human hands. Yet even on this point, their testimonies did not agree. Then the high priest stood amongst them and said and asked Jesus, saying, Have you no answer for what they are testifying against you? But Jesus was silent and did not reply. Again, the high priest asked him and was saying to him, Are you the Messiah? the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Humanity seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You heard his insult against God. What is your decision? They all condemned him as deserving death. And some began spitting on him and blindfolding his face and striking him, saying, Prophesy! Prophesy! And the guards beat him. Peter was down in the courtyard when a woman one of the high priest's servants approached and she saw Peter warming himself by the fire. She stared at him and said, you were also with Jesus, the Nazarene. But he denied it, saying, I don't know or understand what you're saying. And he went outside to the porch. A rooster crowed. The woman saw him and began a second time to say to those standing around Peter, this man is one of them. But again, Peter denied it. A short time later, those standing around again said to Peter, you must be one of them. This, because you are a Galilean. But he cursed and swore to them, I don't know this man that you are talking about. And at that very moment, a rooster crowed a second time.
Peter remembered what Jesus told him. Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down, sobbing. Immediately at daybreak, the chief priests with the elders, the legal experts, and the whole council formed a plan. They bound Jesus. They led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you say so. And the chief priests were accusing him of many things. But Pilate was asking him again, you don't have an answer, do you? Look at all these accusations. But Jesus did not answer. So Pilate marveled. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the criminals who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate for him to do according to his custom, to release Barabbas. Then Pilate answered them, do you want me to release? For you, the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify him! Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole court, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting a thorn of crowns, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed. They spat on him. And they knelt down in homage of him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they began and after mocking him, they led him out to crucify him. Then the soldiers forced a passerby who was coming from the countryside to carry the cross. The man was Simon from Libya and Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they bring Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they were trying to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but Jesus did not take it. And they crucify him. They divide Jesus' garments, gambling for them to decide what each one should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him was written, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucify two criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And those who were passing by were shaking their heads and kept on blasphemously insulting him, saying, aha, you said you could destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests and the scribes were mocking Jesus, saying to each other, He saved others, but he can't save himself. Let the Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross so we might see and believe. And even those who were crucified with him were ridiculing him. 
And when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which translates, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders hearing it said, look, he is calling to Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it for him to drink, saying, let us see whether Elijah is coming to take him down. But Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, gave up his spirit. And the curtain of the temple was ripped in two from top to bottom. And the centurion, who stood facing Jesus, having seen the way he gave up his spirit, said, truly, this man was God's son. There were also two women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary, Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James, the younger and the son and of Joseph and Salomon. They used to follow him and serve him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. Now when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also looking for the dominion of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Now Pilate was surprised that Jesus had already died and summoning the centurion asked whether he died a while ago. And when Pilate learned of it from the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And having bought linen, having taken him down from the cross, Joseph wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of rock. And Joseph rolled over the stone into the entrance of the tomb. But Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching where he had been placed. This is the gospel of the Lord, and we say, thanks be to God. I believe we have uh, a special music, and I may be wrong. I don't think we do. That's okay. Well, the peace of the Lord be with you, and we say, and also with you. Please share that peace with one another now, socially distanced and safely. Peace, Karen. Let us pray. For the prayers of intercession, we will end each petition with Lord and your mercy, and you may respond with hear our prayer. Relying on, the promise, relying on the promise of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility, redeem your people from pride, and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In creation, life springs from death. 
Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On the cross, Jesus appointed, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or tormented. Accompany all who grieve and all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. We especially pray for Elaine, Buddy, Patty, the Wiles family, others on our prayer list, and those we name before you now, aloud or in our hearts. Grant them respite and renewal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You called followers to tend to Jesus' body in death, sustain hospice workers and funeral directors, bless this congregation's ministries at time of death, those who plan and lead funerals and those who prepare meals and who offer support in grief. We especially pray for the Wiles family as they mourn the loss of their beloved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also the faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, for all these prayers, spoken out loud and those in our hearts, we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We give thanks for all those who support this ministry and their many gifts of time and service. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for all those who offer their service to be the hands and feet of you, Lord. We are grateful for all the things that you have done to serve us, and we pray that we may serve you and offer ourselves as gifts and good works for others. Sustain our ministries, sustain our efforts and the things we do for the betterment of this community and for the world around us. Amen. Let us stand uh, for the Lord's Prayer. As our Lord Jesus taught us, we are indeed bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Another reminder that our Holy Week is indeed coming up, and uh, you are welcome to join for all of our services that we are offering. Now receive God's blessing. You are made you are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. May God bless you so that we might be a blessing in the name of the Holy One, the life-giving one, and the Trinity. Amen. Now go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. We... Yeah.